Today we're going to be talking about language because that is a crucial part of cruising. If you're cruising internationally, it means that you're going to be experiencing new cultures, new foods, and with all of that comes new language. Now, it's really easy to get around if you're American because most people speak English, but it really helps to at least try to learn the basics of the language in the country you're in. And if you're me, you're gonna stop at the basics because you suck at language. <laughs> if you're Herbie, who's very good at language, you're gonna take it to the next step. And it's really made all the difference in our travels to have him learning Portuguese while we're here. Now, Maddie's really generous when she says I'm good at learning languages because I've never actually learned the language since I was a kid. I grew up in Puerto Rico and the languages there are English and Spanish. So you learn those all the way through school and that's just how it was. And actually like my first word was wagua, which is water and agua. So it was technically water in either language. So I've never actually had to learn a new language ever. Well, I started doing an app called Duolingo and I was learning some Portuguese because Portuguese is kind of close to Spanish, but in some ways it is not close to Spanish. It's really, it, well, it is its own language. For instance, in Spanish, it's gracias. And in Portuguese, obrigada, if you're a female. But if you're a male, it's obrigado. <laughs> it's obrigado. <laughs> And, but then other words like uh, letter, like uh, the kind that you write in Spanish, it's carta. In Portuguese, it's carta. Uh, carro and carro for car. All those are super close. So you're like, oh, this is pretty easy. We, you know, this is no problem. For example, in Spanish, a uh, screw is a tornillo. And in Portuguese, it's a parafuse. So some things are just completely different. And then, for example, in Spanish, you have, you know, good day, good afternoon, and good night are buenos dias, buenas tardes, and buenas noches. And in Portuguese, bon dia, bon tarde, boa noite. But as with everything, there's local dialects. And in tercera, at least, there's an easy way where you don't have to worry about what time of day it is, where you just go, bush. <laughs> so anyway, the whole point is that I, I started learning with Duolingo and I was, in my brain, I was, trying to create a formula where I'd convert from Spanish to Portuguese because I thought, all right, I'm just going to come up with a, a pattern and like a crossover method and just a little conversion skill where if it's this, it's now that and, and on and on. And that worked at the very beginning to like get me from zero to something. But then once I started actually learning more Portuguese and conversing with people and you know, getting out and actually talking with people, Trying to go Spanish to Portuguese in my head was a huge hindrance and it just slowed it all down and it just, at one point, it just clicked. It's in Portuguese and it's, uh, I've never had to learn a language before and it just, it just does. And what really helps is the immersion. So every day I'm doing my little Duolingo classes and I'm learning some Portuguese, but then all day long, everything's in Portuguese. Now I think it's just generally the polite thing to do when you're traveling in somebody's country and trying to immerse yourself in their culture and understand them as a people, it just makes sense to also understand their language and try to do your best to learn it. And the people here are so patient and nice when we are trying to pronounce something in Portuguese or on a menu or trying or asking them, how do you say this in Portuguese? It brings you one level higher than tourist. As cruisers, since we spend more time than just, say, two weeks in a given country, it's been really, really amazing learning Portuguese and feeling like we belong here a little bit more. It's also opened up a whole world to us that we wouldn't have had before. Just two days ago, we were lost and you'll see it on the Sunday video in a few weeks, but we got very lost and had to pull over and ask directions. The only person, non-cow, for miles was, or kilometers, was this farmer who proceeded to then invite us into his farm, show us all of the ins and outs of raising cows and breeding cows and it was an incredible day but the man spoke no English 
It never would have happened if Herbie hadn't stopped and asked for directions in Portuguese. We've also met people traveling here from the mainland, Porto, Lisbon, and be, we've been able to befriend them because Herbie has conversed with them in Portuguese, and as a result, we now have contacts and friends in Porto, in Lisbon, where we're headed to next on the boat. So we actually, we have friends there waiting for us, which is a huge comfort and just makes it all the more exciting. Now, as Maddie was saying about language takes you one step above tourist. So when we first got here, I figured like, I can actually read Portuguese because uh, I've been told about 70% of the words are identical to Spanish. So literally when I'm reading, I'm just going along and then that word's weird, I'm gonna skip it. And I keep going, I get the general gist of what's going on. So I assume that I could speak with Portuguese people the same way. I'll talk slow Spanish, they talk slow Portuguese, it'll work. It could work, except that Spain has been invading Portugal since the beginning and they don't really like Spanish. And we just had an issue where, for example, I was talking with this guy and we were getting by, he spoke a little bit of English, I spoke major Portuguese at that point, and we were talking, and then I accidentally slipped a word out in Spanish, and he just walked away, mid-conversation, like he wanted nothing to do with us because we were speaking Spanish. But, so then, I started learning Portuguese and talking with people, and at first, I was so terrified when I'd be speaking in Portuguese because, like, the penalty for slipping a word out in Spanish was huge, so I only learned, or I only spoke in the words that I knew 100% were Portuguese. And I'd kind of go in with English, and then butcher the Portuguese, and if I didn't know a word, I'd butcher Spanish really bad with an American accent, so it sounded like something happened, and, and it would work. But then, as I got better at Portuguese, like if I accidentally slipped a word out in Spanish, they didn't care because they knew that I wasn't, uh, sadly, they get a lot of stuck up Spaniards here, but they knew I wasn't that. Like I was someone who was like genuinely interested in trying to learn their language, learn their culture, and like, like live here and experience here as one of the Portuguese. So he found out really quickly that it wasn't going to work to try to speak slow Spanish and then kind of get around to actually learning Portuguese because Spanish was so close. As we spoke to more people, however, we realized that not everyone here is so offended by the Spanish language. But it still was useful for him to kind of distance himself from that so that he didn't get stuck in Spanish, the Spanish thought process while he was trying to converse in Portuguese. So in conclusion, even if you're like me and you only learn the very basics of the language of the country where you're visiting, it can help you understand, it can open doors for you and just become this very useful tool, but also it allows you to experience the place much more fully, which is hard to describe, but we really do recommend if you are cruising or even if you're just visiting for a couple weeks, it'll make you feel so much more connected to the people that you are visiting or the people around you if you know just a teensy bit of what's going on and what and how to communicate. And it's one of the challenges of cruising and traveling. It's it's fun. It's fun to try and communicate and... We keep trading places because the lighting in here is horrible and somebody's got to hold the flashlight. <laughs> Learning the language, it just, it brings you into the culture and, and it brings you in with the people. And These people, they see so many tourists that just come in, take pictures and leave and don't really care to actually get to know the place and the people that make up that place. Because like, you know, rocks and stuff that make a building, they're just rocks. They're, they're not the people that made the building and that are that culture. So when you learn their language, you, it shows that you're trying to become part of them and, you know, and actually like view it the way they view it as well. So it, it's really awesome to, even if it's just a little bit, just try to learn and it'll just set you apart from all the other tourists and it, it really makes a difference. I'm holding the flashlight. Oh. Cruisers who constantly mix up languages and try to slide vocabulary from French into vocabulary from Portuguese and Italian and so on. It's yeah. going to become overwhelming, but I think it's worth it. 
Yeah, the, the funny thing, since Spain and Portugal are so close in language and in border, uh, along proximity. the borders, yeah, in proximity, uh, they, they jokingly call it Portuñol, which I am good at that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Duolingo has been wonderful, and uh, we encourage you to learn a language if you can. <laughs> it's fun to exercise your brain. Yes. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call, and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.